I'm Melissa from Musang, Seattle. Food just kind of innately started growing. I always had a passion for cooking food. I think that's kind of my whole journey as this coming back to Filipino food and my culture. Growing up Filipino, music is such a huge part of the culture. It's something that you grow up with, and I think that hand in hand with food is just something that pairs well together. I'm Saul. To just be around other creative people was a huge, huge opportunity. And so you whip something up and you have to get creative with it. Even when a meal isn't fancy, you know, if you do it with love, I think it's the same thing with music. If it's genuine and from the heart, it's, it's that much better. For me, a lot of how I cook is from the soul and from the heart because I think that the way you can connect to people is through the food and how you cook it. With your art, give it to the world, put it out into the universe. They're like messages in a bottle. Every song that you make, everything that you do, the more that you send out, the more likely something is to come back. It's been this really beautiful journey in creating events where we can actually work together and truly collaborate. Just be in the now and appreciate every moment. You don't know when it'll happen again. And just really, really enjoy yourself and have fun. I'm Saul, the artist. And I'm Melissa, the chef. And, and this, this is, is our Turning, Turning Tables. Table. Musically, it started just like growing up around hip hop. I started writing when I was about 10 years old and started recording by the time I was 11. Hip hop was really something that I grew up in. I always had a passion for cooking food with my father. When my father moved to Seattle in the 70s, he was given the nickname Musang. Musang in Tagalog actually means wild cat. And growing up hearing people call him Musang in the streets, like in Beacon Hill, we'd be walking and people would be like, hey Musang, hey Musang. And to be back in Beacon doing Filipino food um, with the name honoring him, for me that gives me like the greatest joy. It's been really beautiful. Going to school and being a musician turned out to be a blessing for me. I remember when I was finishing up at high school and I already knew that I wanted to do music with my life, I thought about not going to college. Uh, I thought about going to a community college that had a music program, but instead I went to the UW where both of my parents went. It was the best decision I could have made because of the growth that I made as a human being while on campus, and I ended up getting a fellowship while I was at the UW called the Bonderman Fellowship, which gave me funding to travel the world for a year. And I went to, you know, all around East Africa, South Africa, India, South America, back to Haiti where my family's from. That wouldn't have happened without college. And that had a profound impact on who I am as an artist. Yeah, actually, um, I, I went to the University of Washington as well. While I was going to school at the University of Washington, I actually worked in the front of house all throughout college. So that was my first experience with the restaurant industry. Once I graduated from the UW, I had the opportunity to move to Florence, and I did a cooking program in Florence for two years. The school that I attended in Florence was called uh, Apicius, which is part of the Florence University of the Arts in New York. I actually helped open up this international street food restaurant called Streets in Brooklyn. Their main vision was to touch on street food coming from all different countries and to be able to put some Filipino food on there and some Italian. I have performed at probably two dozen festivals around North America. I haven't really been counting. I've performed you know, in South Africa, South America, Europe. I just went back to Europe for the first time actually last summer and played some festivals. Toured around the U.S. I think seven times, twice as a headliner. And I have been so fortunate to do it all as an independent artist and all from Seattle. You know, I've never moved away. I never felt like I really had to move away. This is a great home base, great city. I've recorded four albums and five or six EPs and I'm working on a new album right now and having a lot of fun. Over the last year, I actually was named one of the top five up-and-coming chefs in Seattle by the Seattle Met. Prior to that, I competed on a TV show, The Recipe for Deception, on the Bravo TV network, which was a really interesting and beautiful experience, and I actually won that competition as well. That was really exciting. I'm excited to be able to cook some things that might seem familiar to Seoul, and then kind of create that connection with him. Welcome to the studio. 
So I know that you used to play piano, but you've never been in a studio. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be in good shape, so we're gonna mess around. So right now we're we're in different pianos. Let's try find one that we like. Try this one. Okay. It's kind of interesting. And we're gonna record you. Oh man. So <laughs> do you, you you want just we'll just do the click track, and then you would go. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> All right, that's four bars, okay? So now, that's you. Oh, wow. That's so crazy. And we can put it so on a loop. Cool. Do you like that sound? Yeah, that's want... fine. That okay. sounds good. All right, so now we have the drums triggered up. Okay. You ready? Okay. Might not be on the charts, but, but you know, <laughs> good job. Thank you. That was so fun. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. Thanks for all being here tonight. I'm Saul, and I'm the artist. And I'm Melissa, the chef of Musang Seattle. And this is a really cool thing called Turning Tables. Today, I'm going to be performing three songs with an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert. And for today, I'll be serving three different courses. Um, for the appetizers, you guys are going to be having a mango soup with a poached garlic shrimp and spinach. So enjoy. Awesome. This is our first song. This is the appetizer. This one involves you guys. Everybody put two hands in the sky or a fork to your plate. And when the beat drops, we're going to clap like this. Yeah, more plates, more plates. Okay, keep it going. Huh? She keeps me coming, huh? she keeps me coming. Back to these beats, oh, she give me love it. We can break a rule, let's get into something. When the water's deep, use your feet and jump in. Jump in. Woo! Bar del Corso has been here for five years and the soul of this restaurant is to really maintain the idea of a neighborhood place that's still affordable for the people that are still living here. And they're creating an atmosphere and an energy that is so reminiscent of the Seattle that we love. They're also giving me the opportunity to do pop-ups here. For myself, like my father, this used to be the Beacon Tavern. To be able to cook in a space that he used to come hang out at, it's really beautiful. The original pop-ups were actually Italian pop-ups. Being everything that I learned, I really kind of wanted to bring back this traditional home-cooked style of food. So I kind of veered these Italian pop-ups into Filipino pop-ups. And my first started doing them with like Father's Day and Mother's Day and Easter and saw that they were getting a lot of really good reception and people were excited to see Filipino food on Beacon Hill. And so I started doing a monthly pop-up 
focusing just on Filipino food. They're going really well. That's every third Sunday of the month at Bar del Corso. And for me, the pop-ups, it's like a great way to do research. The menus that I do every month change, which is exciting, because I think the people that do come, the pop-ups, um, are able to get a different experience every time. The measure of success that I've been able to evaluate the pop-ups has been not necessarily numbers or the monetary aspect. I think for me, it's been when I see the people sitting at the table and they're enjoying the food and they're having conversations with other people in the room that it's so community forward and people come in and they'll see people that they didn't see until the last pop-up. And it's just a sense of being part of something and for me, like that's what I'm striving for. I think there's a lot of similarities in performing a show and, and hosting a pop-up. You know, like a pop-up isn't a restaurant that's opened every day. There's a lot riding on this one event. I feel like when you have shows, it's the same. You're building up with the hype of the music and people that are coming are coming to see you specifically for that event. And I think for pop-ups, people are now coming because they know the type of food to expect. I definitely think that there are similarities. For me, when I go on tour, I'm really, really aware of what someone's experience is gonna be from the moment that they walk in the door. What is the house music that they're hearing? Just like in a restaurant, like what's the music that you're gonna play? Who's opening up? I bring, every tour that I've ever done, I've always brought the openers with me because I want people to have a whole positive experience. Just like if someone came to a pop-up, the appetizers, the main course, the dessert, the music that you play, the way that the food is presented to you is the same type of thoughtfulness that has to go into the production of a show. Since I've been performing, I wanted to do something that other people weren't doing yet. And at least locally, there weren't very many people that were playing with a live band. So I took that step pretty early on. My band is comprised of three elements outside of myself. My drummer, Nima Schemes, and my bassist, Elon Wright. Max is my keyboard player, Max Levine. And I've been playing with the same band for about six years, and I would say it's a really big part of my sound now. I would say playing on stage with the same people that you work with in the studio it's a really beautiful thing because you're getting to build on a moment that you already started and now you're getting to include the audience in that and we haven't stopped since then. You know, we've toured multiple times together and we have a super intimate creative relationship. All right, Saul, welcome to Bardo Corso. This Thank is you. my space. Thanks it's for beautiful. being here. Dope. First off, we're just going to kind of get some vegetables ready. Okay. Um, just going to cut up some onions. All right, hopefully I don't lose any limbs. <laughs> Sorry, are you supposed to peel? I always wonder, like, is this, uh, this goes, right? Yeah, you can put that right Okay, cool. So once I, once I cut it like this, what, what, what do I do next? Yeah, so once you cut it like this, you can just keep them together mm -hmm. and then just cut them into fours this way. Okay, cool. Tell me more about your traveling. Oh, yeah. After I graduated and after I put out my first album, I went and traveled for 10 months to 10 countries. Oh, my goodness. And what was your favorite country? Oh, man. Either Ethiopia or Jamaica. Wow. Probably. Do you have any food memories when you're visiting Jamaica? Or? Uh, I have really, really vivid food memories when visiting Ethiopia. Okay. I remember pulling up to Aksum, Ethiopia in the morning and after a long, long bus ride and my friend's family who used to live in Wallingford. Oh, wow. And like her dad had moved back to Ethiopia maybe 15 years ago. And when I got there, they killed a goat for me and like we, we were skinning the goat and taking out all the parts and it was still warm. Yeah. And we ate it for like the next three days. And for me, that was kind of humbling to be a part of like finding a way to use the whole animal. The whole animal. Yeah. And then there's, in the Philippines usually too, when guests come in, uh, my grandfather's um, from this small town and, and that's one of the traditions that they do. Is yeah. They come in and they kill the goat and then you have to process all the different parts. Yeah. But, yeah. Is yeah. this, do we throw this away? Or yeah, we that? can throw that away. Okay, cool. Hopefully I don't mess up your operation. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> um, are you excited to be performing in this space? Yeah, this is cool. I'm super curious to hear what it'll sound like with like a full band and like drummer and stuff. Yeah. Do we use this or not? Um, no, we can actually just set that aside here and okay. I'll use that for later. We, that's so the, perfect. Is it good? Yep. All right. Cool. All right. I think we're done with so that. So I did my part. Great, thank I you. I can say I was a part of this meal. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed your appetizer. Up next, we have fried egg with garlic fried rice, and then on the side, we'll have pork belly and pork shoulder with adobo sauce. Please enjoy. Yeah.
so we can entree. I'm gonna give you guys the entree song. This is a new record. This is a new record. And it's called If You Don't Call. It just came out. If you don't call, yeah, and you think about me, don't worry, I'm good. Yeah, still care about you, never come, but you could. Either way, I'll be good. Either way, I'll be good. If you don't call, when you think about me, don't worry, I'm good. Every day, we were something like one in the same, two sides of the brain. Now we don't talk, we went opposite ways. What happened, I couldn't honestly say. Just part of living life, I guess. People move on, everything ends. Like it's a song, can't repeat it, even your jam. You knew it by heart, even your friends. You treat like your fam, like the sound of your mom. Love some women like my sisters, now they cutting me off. I got exes that can text whenever something was wrong. Now they're married out in Texas and their husband got a gun. So we don't talk if you don't call. Yeah, and you think about me, don't worry, I'm good. Yeah, still care about you, never call but you good. No way I'll be good. No way I'll be good. If you don't call, no way I'll be good. No way I'll be good. Only in Seattle would you get somebody like me making the type of music that I make, having a show like this, I think it only, it only works in a city like Seattle, in my opinion, with the history that we have of DIY music and artists that are really hands-on with their own career and chefs who kind of take the same approach. I have been so fortunate to do it all as an independent artist and all from Seattle. You know, I've never moved away, never felt like I really had to move away. This is a great home base, great city. I think Seattle's the only place that can hold this event because people are willing to help each other between cultures and, and support and create this community that we really are striving for. Seattle currently has a lot of pop-ups that are happening, not just Filipino food, but with other chefs and collaborations. And the music scene has always been really big here in Seattle with supporting local artists. And I think the pairing between that of supporting the local chef and the local artists, it works in Seattle because it's still small enough for people to come and be part of. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the entree. <laughs> Lastly, for dessert, we're serving a coconut cassava cake with ube ice cream and plantains. Um, this is one of my favorite desserts growing up, and it's a, it's a dessert that's served during the fiesta time. So thank you guys, and I hope you enjoy. So this next track featuring a good friend of mine. Make some noise for Camila Recchio. The song is Legacy. <laughs> Legacy. Take a trip down memory lane. One day if you'll remember my name. I live my life like the canvas is blank. Cause it is, it's whatever you think. Hey. Do what you love by any means, go all the way, no in betweens, I don't know everything, but I do know you gotta be proud, so I'ma write my odyssey starting now. Boy been the man since, boy figured out, how to be the prince and never wear the crown. I would want to try to stay close to the ground. Where my people at? Where I'm needed at? Not duty that, grew up on that, with my family tree holding me, I swing from the brand, hope I land on my feet, with the mic in my hand. I was take a legacy before puberty, man, damn. Ain't that some shit? Yeah, that's some shit. Grew up on tracks like this. They don't take it back like this. They don't wanna rap like this. They don't take it back like this. Since Diddy did the Harlem shake, I was in the fifth grade thinking Hall of Fame. No MJ, more like Nas and Jay. And I was catching bars before I caught a fake. Young Saul with the lineup. I was on that rap shit, rockin' that fat farm with a bam shit. Past that with some magni, in the yellow bus to the back seat. Was an outcast and it gave me a break beat. Only turn the D, only turn the D for the D, low G, O, G, low key. 
Ain't that some ish? Ain't that some ish? Yeah, that's some ish. I grew up on tracks like this. They don't take it back like this. The pork belly with the gravy, the rice, eggs, tomatoes on the side. It's delicious. And the dessert was to die for as well. Favorite song. If you don't call, it's fire. Yeah. It's in my head now. If you don't call, I'll be good. You know I'll be good. <laughs> if you don't call, it's really catchy. I also loved when he like made everyone pick up the plates and like bang the plates. I like the dessert the best. I love the plantains and the purple ice cream. The singer, the girl at the end, she killed it. She killed it. I want to hear more of her. <laughs> that, uh, what is it, adobo? That was lit. That was lit. Yeah. Crispy fried pork skin. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> We're such a tight-knit group. Everybody here knows everybody. We're all already friends anyway, so it's, it's a lot of love and good vibes in the building. Yeah, there's a lot of creativity, and uh, I think there's a big calling for it, too. People are hungry for it, so it's like... You know, creative people around here feel that, you know, and they want to want to connect with the people in the community. And like, what better way than music and food, you know? The element of like live music and having the the tables interact with you and the food coming out was like just really beautiful. It was really beautiful to watch, and like, I felt like it was really Seattle inside, there, right? <laughs> that was dope. I was hella curious, like, who's gonna show up yeah. or whatever. Like, what's the vibe gonna be like? It's really cool. I was super surprised by how many people that that we both knew. Yeah. And that it took this for us to cross paths. I'm glad we I'm did. I'm glad we did sure. too. That Just that shows like two degrees of separation and yeah. like coming home and all of us being together. Yeah. I have a new uh, understanding of what it takes to like serve people. The thoughtfulness of really making your own dishes and stuff. You know, the menu for the rest, so many restaurants are, they're not creative at all. Yeah, and not and curated I, yeah. to like Make it feel like it's something you want to feed the people, yeah. right? To see also that a chef can be so passionate about what they're creating and that it really is like a statement of who they are and their identity. It's something that I felt aware of, but I really have a, like a much deeper understanding of now. Yeah. That's beautiful. I so, felt like the music complimented it so perfectly. <laughs> Thank you. We were able to dance in the back, which yeah. is a lot of fun. Yeah. I feel like you got to do this again. I know. <laughs> you no. got to come back. I know, We could sure. do like another joint pop-up. That would be fun. Yeah, yeah. That'd be really good.